bless, bless, bless. How can I help you? I'm new to your show. I've been watching you like a week. Um, I just subscribed and became a member. I have Appreciate it. a truck running in Louisiana. Mm-hmm. Um, and I have a truck in LA, California. I'm trying to get down here to Ohio to put on a, get a contract for it. Okay. The truck I got in Louisiana, I didn't look at the contract. So I pretty much got fucked on that contract. What you mean? What contract? I got a, a Lowe's route. Through what company? Spirit. Spirit, right? I know. I know who Spirit is. They, okay, you got a Lowe's route. And what happened? Yeah. I got. I've been running it for like seven months since July of last year. Okay. Did good. Um, at the end of the year last year, but right now it's not doing good and. We deliver, we install, we remove for one flat fee. Okay. What's the flat fee? $49. Okay. $49? A stop, right? Yeah. How many stops you doing a day? Right now, like 9 to 11. You ain't even making $500 a day. Barely. Nope. My insurance is high. Okay. Why are you still doing it then? Really because of my employees. So you willing to yeah. take a loss to keep them employed? Is basically what you're telling me? That's what I've been doing. So wait on, you you've been running this contract for over a year at forty nine dollars a stop. Not over a year since July. So, so what months. was you making before Ju July, or you just got it in July? I got it in July. I just got it in July. So you so you agreed to forty nine dollars a stop. The con, they worked me on the contract because the contract had no numbers on it at all. Period. I still don't have a contract with numbers. So why are you signing it? I mean, it you can walk away from it. I thought it was a part of the on onboarding. So what? All right, let's let's go back to July. When you signed this contract in July, were you new to this business? Yes. So you bought a box truck. You want to the mentor and look at July. So you bought a box truck sometime earlier last year. The the box truck I got running in Mississippi is uh, leased. You leasing what through Ryder or Penske? I'm leasing as a part of my contract, so it came as a whole bundle. Through Spirit. Through Spirit. So they providing you the truck, all right? So that lease agreement. And that $49 a stop, is that accounting for the lease agreement too? So is the lease, everything, the cost is associated with you leasing that vehicle through that company, is that's what's getting that per stop rate down to $49 a stop? No, I'm still paying, um, I'm still paying um, fees for the truck. I'm still paying for my insurance. I'm still paying for that. How much is your insurance? I pay like four eighty a week. God damn. All right, so listen. Are you you losing every month on this, right? Um, I'm since I've been losing since uh after Christmas till now. So let me ask you, how much you paying your guys? You can't be paying them nothing. I pay my driver one fifty a day and my um helper one twenty five. But you barely making five hundred dollars a day. All mm -hmm. right, so let's do this. You paying how much you paying for the truck a week? 
about about two hundred dollars a week. That's it. Yeah. They don't charge you for no miles or nothing. No. All right, so you paying two hundred a week, and then you paying four wet foot insurance. Hold on, let me give you an exact amount. So if there was no numbers on the contract, how do you know you get forty nine dollars a stop? That's just what they pay me. And who have you talked to? I've been trying to talk, and they will not give me a contract with numbers. And what's the reason behind that? I don't know. So when you inquire, what do they say? He just gave me the runaround for months. Let me ask you this. Are you the person dealing with these people? Yes. F find a man to be the intermediate between you and whoever you deal with. Because ain't no way in hell they're going to treat... Listen, I'm not... Listen, first of all, you shouldn't have did the shit. All right? You shouldn't have took it. There's no numbers on there. Why you accepted it? Why you continue to accept it? Why okay, are you still... Well, let me tell you, when I, signed the, when I signed the package, when they sent me the package, the onboarding package, I just signed it. It didn't look like a contract. So I thought when I went down, when I went there to meet up with the people and do all that i was going to sign a contract but when i got there they were like oh you already signed a contract and i was like i didn't sign a contract with any numbers on it anyway we got started i've been working it i never got a contract i've been asking for a contract and i never got a contract with numbers i literally have three pages of a contract and none of them have numbers so <laughs> You okay, so when they emailed you this, you just signed it. Did you read what you signed? No. I did. Then what did that what 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 whatever it was that you signed, what was it? What did you sign? An agreement. It said it was an agreement, but it wasn't complete. A, dim, a agreement probably indemnifying them from any and all liability. Cause I guarantee you they indemnified themselves. So you didn't sign any type of rate sheet or anything. So now you have a decision no. to make. All right. So here's the thing. You go in there, you, you're asking them. They're not giving you, cause I'm asking you what they say. You're not giving me an answer. They're not giving me an answer. They so when, so, so, so when you go there and ask, man, listen, I need to talk about my contract. What, what are they saying? Verbatim, verbatim. What are they telling you? Well, the contract that I have is out of state, so I I don't the go there. You, I, commu I communicate you over the phone. You in Mississippi, no, right? In no, I don't. My contract is in Mississippi. I'm sorry, my contract is in Mississippi, not in Louisiana. But you live you the contract is in Mississippi. So the truck is running in Mississippi, right? Mm -hmm. And where do you live? I'm in Ohio right now. So the truck is in Mississippi running. You got two guys running down there, right? Three. You got three guys running daily and one truck down there doing final mile. And Seven what part of Mississippi? Seven days a week. And what, Jacksonville? Jackson. All right, Jackson. And all three guys are running all seven days. No. So I have two guys that run five days and one guy that runs four days. So they alternate. Yes. I'm just trying to get understand this. So you never lived in Mississippi. No. You just saw an opportunity. You started a business. You hired people. Okay. Yes. Let me ask you this. Because I'm, I'm asking you a lot of questions because I'm trying to understand because this don't make no sense to me. Let me ask you this. When the settlement comes, who gets the settlement? Do you get the settlement and you pay your people or do your people that you got running get the settlement? I get the settlement and I pay them. Let me see a settlement. Can you forward me a settlement real quick? Yeah. You got my email? I'm going to put my email no. in the chat. No, I'm going to put my email in the chat. Okay. How do I see the chat on here? Oh, here it go for you. All right. So, boom. There go my email. 
mark at the mentormark.com. So email me the last settlement. I'm gonna go use the bathroom. I'll be right back in two minutes. Why are you sitting okay. there? All right, so, um, you email Hold on, I'm right? fine. Why is it doing it like this? Okay. Okay, it's still everything. So something got to be, something, you got the original contract too? Yep. Send me that too. Okay. Hold on. I'm trying. Wait, you said you. Okay, so 150. Two. Yeah, something ain't, something ain't right. You know. And you, what, what you said you was looking to add a second truck in California? I got a truck. I bought a truck in California, and I'm trying to find something for it out here in Ohio. So you bought a truck in California, and it's just sitting out in California right now. Yep. What else you do for a living? That's it. That's it right now. Why are you just buying trucks in different markets? That's not, I didn't buy. Okay, the first one is a rent it. I seen an uh -huh. opportunity. I took the opportunity with rent it. I made some money. I had two trucks going for Lowe's around Thanksgiving and Christmas. Mm -hmm. Where's the download? Yeah. It's downloaded. Um, and then I, I, I came upon a deal on the truck and I grabbed a truck. And now I'm trying to <laughs> figure out what's next. But you just got into the trucking business last year. Last year. How long you been watching this channel? A week. Oh, no wonder. Yep. Who were you watching before you found this channel? Nobody. I had so, did some from Amazon in um, Michigan when I lived in Detroit for a little while, but that didn't work out. You did it yourself? No, I had a partner. So you just like a investor, but you really don't fully understand this industry. So to speak. But I'm trying no. to get a I'm trying to get an idea on your background. What led you to trucking? As far as this 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 industry, this lane. Um, I guess the money. I thought. Okay. <clears throat> well, Thank you this. Okay. All right, let me on. see. Let me send my email. And then what else did you ask for? You sent it to I Mark just, um, at All right, Mark. It start with an O. It don't start You see it? Yep. Yeah. Mark at the mentormark.com. Mm-hmm. Oh, there it go. All right, let's see. Shut up. 
These th this looks like. Wait a minute, hold on. Who is who are these people's names? Junior Terry Junior. Oh shoot! Hold on. Let me see what I think. Oh, that would just be my driver. But this is this is the invoice. This is what they sent you, right? Yes. Check request two two. So, okay, so these check requests is I had to I had two trucks at first and they're still charging me for the two trucks. So they're giving me the money back. You see where it says the $400 uh what does it say? Enter enter uh, what does it say? Hold on. Oh, man, man, oh, man. So you paying All right, so boom. Let's take a look here. So one twenty seven. I want to send you my contract. I really want to send you that too. So, 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 yeah, send me the contract. So, on one twenty seven, you did three stops at a rate of forty nine dollars and forty one cent. No, Four. no, it's not in order. It, I did uh, thirteen stops that day. Oh, they're not in the order. 20, on the twenty seventh. Yeah. Oh yeah, I see nine stops here, four forty four, and then another three stops. So that's twelve. So, and this is for a week, right? Yes. All right. So, and truck insurance for a sixty-eight interchange agreement. What's the interchange agreement? That's the rental of the trucks. So you pay. So they charge you two hundred dollars. So this is for two trucks. Yes, but I only have one, so that's why you see that check request. That's re replacing the money that they're taking out. Corporate OCAC fee. That's occupational hazard insurance. A uh, hundred dollar bond and seventeen dollars administrative fee. So a thousand eighty and eighty eight cent fees minus two hundred. So eight eighty eighty eight. So you're gonna get two hundred of that back. And this is for a no, week. no, no. They already put the two hundred on the check. All right. So yo yo yo. You spent a thousand dollars in eighty in fees, so your net commission was thirty two twenty four twenty eight for that week. Um, and this is for like a week or two ago. Um, let me start twenty nine six. And how far are you going out? What's your route? You saw within um, 50 miles, 100 miles, 150 miles? 200 miles a day. And they, not give, miles a day. and they not give you any incentive for anything over 150 miles? It's just flat 49? Yeah. yeah. All right, well, how much does it cost you to operate a day on average? You spend, you spending, you spending 100, what, uh, 275 a day for labor, right? Mm-hmm. You spending two hundred dollars a week for truck. You running seven days a week. Yeah. And you spending another four hundred dollars a week on insurance. Period. Right. Everything is included right there on that sheet I gave you. I there's nothing extra on the side. The insurance so, is on there too. So, how much are you spending in fuel? About seventy five dollars a day. And you don't have an authority, right? I just got my authority for the new truck. But this, you're running under their authority. My DOT number, their authority, I guess. My DOT number, though. You're crossing state lines. You in Jackson. So you cross state lines sometimes. Jackson is no, right there, right? No state I haven't crossed. I don't cross state lines. But you're using their authority, though, right? You leased on to them, right? You got to be. I, I know they're using my DOT number. Okay. All right, hold on. I, didn't, I didn't have an MC number when I first applied with them, so I guess I am. Yeah. All right. So this is Spirit Logistics, right? Yes.
And how much have you been losing as of recently? What have you been upside down for the past few weeks? Just a couple, a uh, couple hundred dollars a week. It's like I'm, I'm breaking even almost. I'm probably so why just paying you, a. All right. Well, well, one, you're not making enough money. Forty nine dollars ain't gonna cut it. A stop. You're not even paying your guys enough. I'm surprised they even coming to work for you. It's just not enough money. You doing ten stops is making you five hundred bucks. That ain't nothing. So you got a decision to make. Technically, this is something that they really should just be running for themselves. There's not enough room for you to make money operating like this. In this. Now, from July until Christmas, it was good. Okay, well, I I would love to go through everything, but we just don't have the time for that. So that's why I'm trying to get, you know, I'm trying to ask you what changed. Were you getting more stops? Because if you I'm got more, more stops. If, all right, so there you have it. So you're still overworking and not being compensated, but because you're getting more stops, you get in, an increase in pay over the 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 uh, the volume of more stops that you have. Once those stops decrease, then you're going to see that it's really not worth it. It's not worth it with the most stops because even when you was getting, you probably was making, what, maybe four or five more stops maybe? Yeah, like we were getting like 17, 18 stops. Okay, so and how much were you profiting after at when everything was all said and done? At one time, like $1,000 a week. And you running seven days a week? Yeah. Uh, that would be a waste of my time. Five hundred dollars to run to ten stops, final mile. You going out to two hundred miles? These guys is probably spending an hour or so on each dob, depending on the scope of the delivery. Nah. And now let me ask you this: claims. Who's responsible for claims? Because you paying four hundred dollars a week for the insurance. How many claims have you had? Um, no big claims. I've had small claims where I've sent the contractor to, to do. Okay. That comes out of your pocket. Me and my guys, the employees. I'm, oh, I, so go, you... I go half with them. Okay. We go half. Well, here's the thing, man. I'm going to be honest with you. It just This is just, you're not making enough money. You sent me the contract, right? Oh, no, I'm sorry. I was listening to you. Let me send it to you right yeah, now. Yeah, because this right here, like $50 a stop, this ain't nothing. Like, I wouldn't even be doing this. To be honest with you, you should be making at least in Mississippi, like on the low end, 650. And I'm like, I don't know. I'm not going to say that, but no, say what you want to say. I, it ain't referring to I me. I pay pretty good for out there. You do what? I pay pretty good. I, I pay pretty good for out there. 150? Yeah. You never did this work before, ma'am. You know what this work no. entails? Y'all doing low, so y'all doing refrigerators, y'all doing washers and dryers, y'all yep. doing ranges. All right, so boom. They have to tackle stairs sometimes, second, third floors maybe, right? All right. Yes. That's not easy work. Now, the cost of living, you know, I don't know what the cost of living is in Mississippi, but I know it's 2024, and doing that many stops, whether you're a driver or a helper, you know, $125 ain't really no money to be doing that type of work in today's times. So now if $125 is pretty good for out there, then I need to see what the cost of living is in Jackson, Mississippi. So basically what I'm telling you is it's just not enough. You're not making enough money you can't even pay these guys more money because you're just not making enough. It's not to me. It's not even worth it. And then, second of all, they can't even give you straight answers. I wouldn't want to do no business with nobody that can't give me a straight answer. I agree. I get frustrated every week. So, second, third of all, they mistreating you because you're a woman. You're not the first woman that's come on my platform that. I run a logistics company, uh, a final mile company uh, contract 
that's gotten this type of treatment. You're going to get it because you're a woman, and you also want to get it because you just don't know nothing. If they see that they can take advantage of you, they're going to take advantage of you. You don't know anything. And on top of that, you're not standing on business. You continuing to do it. So they're like, oh, man, this one's sweet. Man, we ain't giving her nothing. Man. When, they take my when I don't work, they take my money. I still get charged. Well, here's the thing. You when, when, when you say don't work, that's period. Don't ever go back again in life. They can't charge you when you quit. They gonna keep my my last two weeks of pay. They so what you mean? Now. How they gonna keep your last two weeks of pay when you did the work? You just don't want to do the contract. That's why I need to see the contract. Like, are you obligated right to it to a time frame? Like, I'm, I need I I ain't never seen when a contract like this contract before. Is so incomplete that I didn't even realize it was a contract. I want to send it to you. Hold on. So that's contract. what I'm trying to ex understand. Why did you sign it? <laughs> This is it right here. All right, let me. You sending it now? Well, I'm downloading it, so I can send it to you right now. I need to see this contract. It's it. I I didn't even know the contract. Let me see. Ah. Uh. This is this came with my onboarding. Like when he asked for me to send my business papers and LLC information, like I didn't know it was a contract. We're gonna see. It's incomplete. It is is it doesn't have any information on it. I hear what you saying, but I'm waiting on you to send it so I could take a look. Okay, I sent it. You sent it? Yeah. All right, let's take a look. And this is. Uh, let's see. Oh, there we go. This is a contract. It's incomplete. It doesn't have any information on it. I didn't know. Yeah, I didn't know that it was the. So, so, so if you go to page, I'm going to pull it up on the screen too, all right? So what I'm going to do is let me, because this got to turn into a teaching moment. What page is this? One, two, three, four. All right, I'm going I'm to, so page four. Let me let me download it so that way I don't I can blur out this. So let me download it. Let me open this up. Let me pull this over here. It's a PDF. Let me pull this over here. Let me make it bigger. All right, so boom. Uh, let me make sure it ain't got none of your personal information. Let me go. I'm on live. Let me get to it. Let me go upstairs. Let me, let me, um, I'm going to delete some of this personal information since you left it open where I could move it out the way. Okay. I don't know. Yeah, I'm just deleting your personal information. All right, boom. Before I share it, let me delete that. Oh, you know what? Let me cross it out. No, I just delete it. All right, so boom. All right, so I'm finna share this. Let me make sure I got everything because I don't want to put your personal information in here. All right, hold on. Let me bring you back up. And then let me. So this is page four of your contract. Yes. So. Did you get off? None of this shit is filled out. That's now, I, I deleted. I, I I deleted your personal information where it says carrier in the above part of the contract, 
But all these charges right here, none of this shit is filled out. So when you saw this, why did you sign it? This has nothing to do with what your cost is, but these are the deductions. I'm not signing anything that's empty on deductions because now I don't know what I'm paying. So forget, I forget the payment. Look at the deductions. These are these are the things that they're going to deduct from you. And this was blank. Yeah. That's what I said. Often, it didn't look often, like a contract. I, 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 but this is a contract, ma'am. This is a contract. You know why? Because it says it right here. These are deductions. Amount of deductions. Frequency. It's blank. Once you sign it and you send it over, your signature's on the last page. Somebody could fill in whatever they want to fill in. But they don't have a fill-in copy either. Ma'am, it doesn't matter. See how I just deleted all your personal stuff? Yeah. Why? Because of technology. If I got the technology, you don't think they got the technology? The point that I'm trying to make is you signed a contract that had... These are deductions. This is blank. I can go in and just fill this shit out at any given time. You signed it. You signed the last page. You signed the last page. Now, anybody can go back in and fill this shit out. We ain't even talking about your pay. These are the deductions. Physical damage, uh, lost claims, equipment rental fees, penalties. None of this shit is filled out. Let me, let me pull up another page, but let me make sure I don't want to pull up Make sure I don't show you private information. Excuse me. Uh, uh, amount of deductions. Hold on. All right, let's go back to. Let me pull this page up. All right, so boom. Let me show you one one more thing, or well, two more things. Let me delete that. Let me delete that. Let me delete your EIN number two. Well, what they sent me later on was a 23-page track. 23-page what? This that I sent you is what they sent me and what I signed. It was a five-page right. contract. So this, see right here where it says Spirit Logistics Network Independent Delivery Service Provider Agreement? It's a contract. It's the agreement. Agreement, contract. Same thing. Okay. I deleted all your information. But when you put your information in and then you sign on the last page, this is the agreement. Right here. Agreement. Let me show you another thing. Let me pull that page up. My bad. Let me pull it up because I don't want to. Hold on. I'm going to show you what they sent me later. I, I want to. Take, I don't want to show your personal information. So hold on. I, I'm looking at your signatures here. Uh, you know, Martinez, you know, he, Martinez took advantage of you. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Appendix B. Freight laws delay paragraph 10. Terms, the agreements will become effective. Hold on. Uh, Appendix B, rates. In accordance with the paragraph A of the agreement, the rates applying to the transportation service to be provided pursuant to the agreement are set forth in the attached rate schedules. All right, where are the attached rate schedules? I didn't get that. So why did you sign this? I didn't know that that was a full contract. But see, here, it says it right that here, all man. The first time, when I sent the application, they sent that with me sending all my documents. My, I didn't know that that was the contract. I thought I was going to get a contract with some fees on there, with some rates on there. I thought it was going to be something here. else that I signed. You see this right Let here, man? I'm going to send you what they sent me later. Yeah. Yeah. Send me whatever. Send, send, you going to send it to me now? Right now. All right. So right here it says, if you look at the appendix B, section two payments in accordance with paragraph eight of the agreement, any special payment requirements are set forth below. You see this colon? 
There's nothing right there. Freight loss damage or delay in accordance with paragraph 10. Then the paragraphs, it says on the attached rate There's schedules. No right, so here's the thing. This is what I'm telling you. If you read Appendix B, Section 1, where it says rates in accordance with paragraph 8 of the agreement, the rates applying to the transportation service to be provided pursuant to the agreement are set forth in the attached rate schedules. When you didn't see no attached rates, when it says attached rate schedules, the first thing I would have went to is get look at the attached rates so I can see what the rates are. Once I see, wait a minute, hold on, I don't have an attached uh, 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 agreement to see what uh, uh, paragraph 8 is, the last thing I'm going to do is put my, my signature over to the left. I'm going to email Yanni Yadis Martinez over here with Spirit Logistics and say, hey, I didn't get the attached page. I can't see paragraph 8. And on top of that, everything that got a colon ain't nothing else after it. You need to send me uh, um, the rest of the agreement so I can read paragraph 8. And you need to resend this because none of this shit ain't it ain't filled out. It says it right here, paragraph eight. In the attached rate schedules. Freight laws them in accordance to paragraph 10 of the agreement. Any special provisions dealing with cargo loss and damage claims are set forth below. There's nothing here. You don't even know what, what you paying for claims. Then then they got a they got you on a non-compete. Confidentiality and non-solicitation. This is a non-compete in accordance with paragraph 13 of the agreement. Any exceptions or modifications to the confidentiality or non-solicitation? Solicitation. Soliciting your people to come work for them. And there's nothing here. So what I would have did is I would have got on the phone with Yadis Martinez and said, hey. He doesn't answer the phone anymore. Yeah, because you're still working. But here's, the, here's what I'm telling you. It ain't about him not answering the phone anymore. You should have never signed it in the first place because it's incomplete. You don't even have the attached paperwork to determine what you even getting paid i heard about spirit i heard about spirit logistics we don't have them in this market but i've heard some things about them nothing good i guess they still on that record nothing good you send me that other paperwork yes i think it's the right stuff i'm looking right now yes i did what time is it? I'm spending a lot of time on here tonight. Uh, so confidentiality. Uh, so that's Appendix B. Uh, authorization and direction to oh, make deductions from payment. Thing. I sent you the wrong thing. Uh, Did I? Let's see what else you got over here. See what I sent you. Yeah, you sent it to me in Word. I got to download Word. I, I ain't got Word. Okay, I got something. Hold on, I'm going to get it to you real quick. Yep, here it's all right here. Download as a PDF. Now, the 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 contract you sent me, it says signed only pages, right? Now, mm -hmm. is this how it was titled when it was sent to you? Yes. Phase four signed only pages. So they only sent you the pages that required a signature. And then, so, okay. Go ahead. So this guy Yadis, this is the guy that you reach out to, right, to inquire about. I, that's what I started to reach out to. He doesn't. And I don't want it as word. Okay. 
So what was he answering at first? Yeah. And you express your grievance. Hey. Oh, no, no, no. Once I got in, he stopped answering. So you haven't talked to him since he onboarded you? No. So who? So that's my question. Who are you talking to now in regards to everything you talking to me about? A manager at the store. Dang, why is it's only down at the low store? Manager. At the store? At the uh, low uh, store? Spirit, uh, it's a, the spirit logistics manager at the that right. work that, that's over the store. All right. All right. Now, now, what, come on. Walk me through this. When you you're not there, so you call. You say, "Hey, I'm uh, Mrs. Lewis." Um, I want to inquire about my rate. Okay, how can I help you, Mrs. Lewis? Yeah, we're we're at forty nine dollars. I don't have a contract that states what rate we're supposed to be getting paid. I think we should be getting paid more money. Blah blah blah. This is where I'm pretty sure the conversation is centered around, right? All right, and how does whoever at Spirit Log- Log- uh, uh, Logistics respond? Um, he would say. Oh, first he said, we have a signed contract. I said, well, can you send me the signed contract that you have? Because I haven't signed the contract. And then he sent the contract. And then I said, well, the contract is empty. It has nothing in it. Because originally, the first day that I went down there to meet and go into the office, I thought I was supposed to sign the contract. And when I went there, they was like, oh, you signed the contract already. And I was like, well, they didn't have no rates and no numbers or nothing on it. That's what okay. Yadis told me in the beginning. The recruiter told me when you get down there, they're going to have you sign that when you get there. So okay. anyway, I'm calling him back and forth trying to get it. I never got the contract. He's like, oh, I'm going to talk to somebody to see if I can get it. He sent me this, but it, this is not a signed contract for, with that I just sent you. I only can forward it in Word. I don't know. You you never signed a contract to begin with, right? I only signed that paper that the agreement, which is a contract. You said yes, yeah, a contract. This is a contract. That, this, that is what I. Signed. What 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 you sent me is the only thing they sent you. You never had no extra sheets or nothing. No, so only insurance. For you to run with them, the only thing that you only paperwork to do what you do for them, the only paperwork that you ever came across was what you sent me these four sheets yes besides my insurance papers my applications for my driver and applications for helpers yes all right let me see something real quick this is the name of your company right all right hold on let's see something oh Are you able to download it? I got a I don't I don't have word on here. Okay. Um, on this particular Mac. But I'm gonna have to down hold on, let me uh, let me see uh, Mississippi. Let me see if I could just I, forward I, you to email. So, yeah, forward me the email. So ma'am, your company is Is out of Lakeland, yes, Florida, yes, Mississippi. Yes, yes. Ma'am, you have you have an MC number. I just got the MC number in December. Hold on one sec. Should be coming first on the date stated in the first paragraph. This agreement and shared remain in the fifth one. Drive and remove this. Yeah, this is a bad deal, man. Even in, right here in section two, uh, uh, article one dash a. 
This agreement shall become effective on the date stated in the first paragraph of this agreement and shall remain in effect for one year and shall automatically renew for successive one year periods, provided, however, that either party may terminate this agreement. You can't, uh, yeah, well, you can. You can rates, the points of paragraph A, rates applied to transportation services to be provided pursuant to the agreement are set forth in the attached rate. Yeah, it's like, I, to be honest with you, ma'am, I would not run this. You, you hear no. me? Yes, I Hell, hear you. Heck, you know. You don't even know what you're running. You have no, you, you, like, this is not even professional. You have no contract. You have a contract, but there's nothing on it. I agree. You have a blank contract with your signature on it. With with verbiage, verbiage, blankness, and your signature. Verbiage, blankness, and your signature. The stuff in the contract that matters is blank. The most important stuff is left blank. So to continue to run something, right? That mm -hmm. you don't even have any knowledge of what you're supposed to be. like they're just telling you anything they won't even talk to you why work for them why work work with them why partner with them they giving you the run around purposely because you allowing it so now this is where you got to pull your, you 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 want to be a you want to be a business owner you gonna have to make a tough decision you could continue to run and lose or continue to run right because here's the thing and here's where a lot of people fall to the wayside and fall victim they don't look into their business until when they start losing money you should have known this shit when you was making money oh wait this is the whole email hold on a chain of email yeah this is what he sent me and then you like they're leasing you the truck they're, you're, they're, you're paying for the truck you're paying for the insurance they're paying you kibbles and bits to run when there's claims, you're paying for that. They could be getting $150 a stop. Yeah. So they're taking 66% and giving you 33%. And that's probably what they're getting. They probably get about $150 a stop. Because the store usually sells the delivery at $125, $150. Depending So, I I don't. Did you get the whole chain if I forward you this? I'm trying to see. Or did you just get you, one you, message? You sent it to me? I'm sending it to you now. I just sent it to you right now. This is oh, all of it. I hope you can see it. Looking now. Oh, uh, see, it came through yet. Oh, no. Nah. Yeah, it did. All right. Here's a list of penalties that. Okay, so. All right, penalty fee, sign contract, delivery chain. This is after two months of me just keep asking him for a contract or some fees or some numbers, how much it costs for new drivers, onboard, all that. All right, so this is just a chain of emails. I just read it aloud. So the the, the attachments, I looked at the delivery chain, I don't need to see that. Penalty fee. All right, here we go. I'm going to share this. Hold on, let me download this so I can open it up. 
All right, so let's see what this is. Let's get to the bottom of this here. Now you got me curious. All right, so we're going to open this up in numbers. Let's blow it up. Sheet one, sheet two. You sent me. Is there customer complaints? All right, boom. Right, let me share this. This is what they sent you when you asked. Yes. So they sent you everything that's costing you money instead of what you're making. I wouldn't even sign this shit no way. You know why? They charge you $1,000 per drop route. You don't even make $1,000. They're charging you double than what you would average if you ran the route. Why would you sign up? Why would you even continue to do something like this? So God forbid... I, I hear, hear me out, man. None of this shit makes any sense. Why would I sign on to something that, God forbid, I have a situation... They're going to charge me twice as much as what I average if I ran the route. They're not even charging me for what the route would cost. They're charging me $1,000. This is a scam. you telling me you're making $49 and some change a day. Let's just round that little 20, 30 cents up to $50. You said you average about 10 stops. That's $500. Your truck breaks down. A guy doesn't show up and you can't make the route. You way up in Ohio. They're going to charge you $1,000. They're going to charge you for two days. Forget the route. You could have, your route could be $500. You could have 10 stops. No, we're just going to charge you $1,000. We're going to charge you $500 for your route and we're going to charge you another $500 because you're going to pay it anyway. Why would I? Why would I commit to something like this? This, this is some old, ma'am. This is this is ma'am. This is extortion. This is what this is. This is extortion. This is extortion, ma'am. This don't even make sense. I've never seen no shit like this ever before in my life. I would never agree to no shit like this. Drop routes a thousand dollars per route, a route that is dropped and not tended to delivery team that is a result of failed delivery of customer product on scheduled day one thousand dollars per route. Have you ever made a thousand dollars on a route since you've been running with this company? Darn Black Friday, Christmas time. So Black Friday, but any other time, no, right? No. So, so if you were to drop a route tomorrow, you would end up paying double what the route would pay you. No. If you miss a stop, a hundred dollars a stop. You make fifty dollars a stop. Drop stops, a hundred dollars per stop. They're charging you double. They already know what the math is. They know what they make and they know how much they're getting you for, and they're extorting you double. You make fifty dollars a stop. They charging you a hundred dollars a stop. So if your truck break down, you got 10 stops and you get eight done and you can't do the last two, they're going to charge you 200 for something that would only pay you 100. They charge you 100% markup on some shit that you didn't even do. That you wouldn't have made anyway. You wouldn't have made $200 on two stops if you dropped two stops. No, ma'am. Listen, at this point, I don't even need to see what they paying you. I wouldn't do this shit. No way. This shit don't even make sense. Urine bombs, also known as urine bombs or other biohazard found in trash, recycle locations, other composed. 
Recycle appliance disposable container replacement. When a delivery team does not offload their return haulaways, appliances in the recycle container pitchers will be refusing to take haulaways, $100 per refusal. When the delivery team refuses to take a haulaway based on the customer's request, regardless if the haulaway is not on the load ticket or manifest, retrip to pick up will be non billable charge. So if they don't put something on your manifest, they're forcing you to take it, even though it's not on your manifest. So you're going to be liable for something. The customer can say anything. It's not on your manifest. And if you refuse it because it's not on your manifest, you're going to be held liable for it regardless. And they're going to charge you $100, $100 for it, even if it's not on your manifest. Do you, un do you understand what I'm telling you or what I'm breaking down to you? Yes. So why do it? This is this is extortion. It's n this is nothing less than extortion, ma'am. This is extortion. This all this is is extortion. What is this? Spirit. Die party. What? what XPO. I don't know what that is. I'm trying to figure it out. Oh, this is um, probably claims complaint percentage wise. Uh, um, surveys and, or something like that. Yeah, in, in comparison to other their competitors, uh, which is DSI, the Vail, City Two. They the highest. Well, not well, XPO, but XPO, the Vibe, X, XPO is the third largest trucking company in the country. So the Vibe is just going to be way more than what these companies would be. They're number three in the country as far as complaints. Let's see. Yeah, XPO is going to have the most because just the amount of shit that they got going on. But in comparison to companies similar to the size of Spirit, UST, uh, Retail Direct, JB Hunt, JB Hunt is a big company, but their final mile division is very, 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 very small. All right, so this is just based on final mile. Innovail, DSI. So they high. They right behind DSI. Right here. Yeah. Yeah, ma'am, I would not... Yeah, I would run actually if I were you. The other what? Hold on, you sent me another email? No, it should be in that email. That's all that came in that email. Hold on. Uh, go, let me go see. down. What am I looking for? This contract. Oh, you said go down. Yeah, didn't you say it was a chain? Or yeah, I see a chain from Matthew Phillips. I'm writing to request a copy of the contract we spoke on Sunday as well as instruction deliveries and installations, fines and non-delivery fees for new drivers as we... So... Um, That's Nick, what I sent him trying to get a copy of the contract. Right, and so the, here's the response. Here's a list of penalties that can be charged by Lowe's. The stops from Sunday are considered drop stops, and that is $100 per occurrence. So I guess you drop some stops this is from you dropped some stops recently or some shit. You have yet I didn't to be, get, huh? I didn't get charged for the drop stops. Yeah, he, was he said. To charge me and I said, he said. I have nothing said, in writing that tells right, me about right. the fees. So that's when he sent me that with the fees. Right. He says it right here. The stops from Sunday are considered drop stops, and that one hundred dollars per occurrence. You have yet to be charged for any drop stops, but the store could do that at any time. So, so you don't have the contract. Isn't it like a contract after that? There's three no, attachments, man. right? I see three attachments. The penalty fee, which I just pulled up. Phase four, which is what we already pulled up, which is the, oh, this is more. Oh, okay. Hold on. Yes. Oh, okay. All that's, right. That's All right. Let me, down, let me download this. Let me download this. All right, that I'll doesn't have my signature on it, but that's the contract I, they sent me back later. I see. All right. Let's pull it up. Let's get to it. Let's get to it. Let's see. 
Alright. Let's see here. They sent you a blank contract is what you're trying to show me? A 21-page blank contract versus the five-page one that they sent me originally. It still doesn't have any information on it. That's what they sent when I made the request. Look, Keep going I down. Keep scrolling. They showing you, they keep showing you everything that they going to charge you, but they not showing you what they going to pay you. Anti-tip compliance? Y'all can't accept tips? I'm at, no, I'm asking you, ma'am. I never heard about that one. How you never heard about this right here? Yeah, I never... Never it's read it, ma'am. You never read it. Anti-tip compliance. Why are you like this company is a scam? Everything that I see that they charging you for is on some old Al Capone, Frank Nitty, extortion. This is extortion. Anti-tip compliance? First offense, $150. Second offense, $250. Third offense, release, fired. Non-compliance with pictures. Pictures not taken. $50. What is it? Is anti-tip, does that have to do with actual... Tipping or is that another terminology? Is tipping mean something else? Do you know? No, I don't. Lost badge. Failure to be in uniform. They so ain't even ever you, gave us no badges. They never gave you no badges. Uh-uh. All right, you said keep going. So I went down. So this is the page that you want me to look at, Appendix D. All this over here is blank. This is just a bunch of fees that they're going to charge you, but I, I don't see where they're, they're telling you what you're going to get paid. Uh, yeah. Yeah, man, I, 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 wouldn't, I wouldn't run this if I were you. Why are you still running this? This is... Like, Why? You finna have claims taken out anyway. You worried about your last two payments. I, I guarantee you one thing. When you do decide to leave, they not gonna pay you. I can tell you that right now. They not gonna pay you. They already been extorted you. Yeah, so I'm you're right. They, they not gonna pay you. You, have, you, don't, you don't even have nothing to go through arbitration. I don't even see. They ain't even gotta... They don't even have... Normally, there's something in here in regards to arbitration. Rates and pay. No, no numbers in there. Uh, nah, you you wouldn't. I'm looking for arbitration, freight loss, damage, and relay. Carrier loss. Competition has to non compete. Indemnify. They're going to make sure they ain't indemnified. Subcontract prohibition, can't sub subcontract it out. Uh, assignment, modification, benefit agreement. 
All right. All right, dispute resolution right here. In the event of any dispute, claim, question, grievance, this is what you need to be reading, or disagreement between the parties, even a dispute involving alleged wages or payments claimed due by carrier or by the discrimination, harassment, civil rights violation, or any of their respective officers, directors, associates, agents, employees, representatives, or affiliates arising out of or relating to this agreement or the relationships created here under a controversy upon written request of either party, the party shall promptly meet in a good faith effort to re oh, ma'am. Just stop running this contract. Just just cut your losses. I mean you can do what you want, but <laughs> Looking at this, like, there's no way I would have, like, first, I wouldn't have signed it because there's nothing to sign because they didn't tell you what you are, what you're working for. You don't know what you're working for. So I would have never signed it off the strength of that. And then when I would have saw this other bullshit, I definitely wouldn't have signed it. All the other bullshit came later. But, yeah, I agree. But you, you've, right. you've, you've had drop routes and you've had missed stops before. So you've had hundred dollar charges right you got because in this email they saying you got some some pending no i didn't get them it was because it, it let me tell you what they do once i start pressing for like my contract and stuff like that then they start finding fees and finding stuff to try to charge me for all right that goes back to what i said they're extorting you they're leaning on you what you want me to do talk to me Give me some advice. Nah, this is beyond advice at this point. You gotta get into some gangster shit now. This is beyond advice. You gotta get into some gangster shit. They've been taking your listen, listen, hear me out. You probably should be getting somewhere near eighty-five dollars a stop. If they if they show and listen, if you drop a route. We're going to charge you a thousand for it. You know why they charge you a thousand? Because the store probably charging them a thousand. The route probably pay a thousand. They charging you a hundred dollars a stop. That means because it's probably paying a hundred dollars a stop. If you get fifty dollars a stop and you miss the stop and they're going to charge you a hundred percent on what they would pay you if you completed the stop, why would you run it? Because anything can happen. That's not even fair. I agree. So even if they paid me, even if I signed this and it sold $50 a stop and I signed it at $50 a stop and I got to the page where it said, well, man, if you miss a stop for whatever reason, we're going to charge you 100 Man, I'm not signing that. I'm cool. Because eventually it's going to happen. Why would I pay for I two stops? Why would I? From the beginning. Ma'am, you didn't even read this. I did read it. Like I said, I thought it was more to be signed when I uh, went face to face. I hear what, you, I hear what you're saying, but you, you don't, you don't sign there. anything. You don't sign anything. If it's uncertainty, you can't say, well, I signed it with the hopes or with the understanding that once I got there, the rest. No, I don't sign nothing. You signing son, you signing uncertainty. You don't even know what you signed. Guess what? Because a bunch of the paperwork, they sent you four sheets. They only sent you originally the, the sheets that require your signature. They didn't send you none of the in-between shit. Because somewhere in those initial I'm 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 gonna keep it funky with you. Because based on the conversation we having, I can only imagine where your mind frame was at seven, eight months ago or nine months ago when you was inquiring. This guy got a job to onboard people. You called, you inquired. Once he got on the phone with you, he saw you was green. He probably got a quota of people he needed to onboard. He took advantage of the fact that you was green. And that was it. And he stopped answering the phone for you, like you said. 
because he did his job. He took advantage of you. He saw you was green. It's a lot of information you don't know now, and you've been running for seven, eight months. And you continue to run. So now everybody, oh, man, sure. Oh, your old girl, yeah, buddy, she, yeah, she ain't even down. Yeah, she got some guys running, but she not even down. That's the crazy. She's not even down here. So she doesn't even have the ability to check on her own business. Oh, this is sweet, man. Yeah, I need, man, I sent her the sign pages, man. She don't even, let's pay her $50. Yeah, we can just fill it in whenever. Everybody working from the store is making fifty dollars, forty nine fifty. That, that's on them. All the contractors. That's on so they, shit. So shit. They jump off a bridge, you gonna jump off it too? No. So if they goofy, you gonna be goofy too? Listen to me. I'm not signing nothing. You telling me if God forbid the, t the, the I'm on my last stop and I get a blowout and I can't make the last stop and it's a fifty dollar stop, you gonna charge me a hundred dollars for it? If it's a $500 route and I can't make it, you're going to charge me $1,000 for it? So that means if I run seven days and I miss one day, I'm upside down today because I got charged for two days for the day I missed. Now, if they charge me for the route, I don't like that, but that's fair. You're charging me for two routes or you're charging me for two stops or however many stops I miss. You're charging me double for it. You look into, everybody looks into their contract. It's like I had a guy here. He bought a truck through a, a goddamn... Um, uh, uh, equipment uh, funding place. When everything was rolling, everything was fine. When the truck started to have mechanical issues, that made him go look into the contract. Whenever people run into issues is when they want to do what they were supposed to do in the initial phases. Nah, this is extortion. They won't even get on the phone with you. And they keep sending you blank shit. They know what you want. They know what you asking for. You see how you passive? So I can only imagine how you with them. You not leaning on them. But here's the thing. Even if you lean on them, it's not going to result to anything anyway. So the only option you have is really to walk away. They're not going to pay you. They ain't going to pay you. Based off what I'm seeing, nah, they're not going to pay you. That's a fact. And you telling me every time you press the issue about the paperwork, they find something to charge you for. So what is this he's talking about right here as far as the $100 a stop for the missed stops? When did you miss some stops? Um, I don't remember. I think my, I don't remember. My guys called. They didn't answer the phone. They called. Your back guys didn't answer the phone? No, the, the the people that the delivery, the person that was getting the delivery didn't answer the phone. Wait, so y'all made the attempt? Yeah. So they can't charge you for that if the customer wasn't there? They, they, didn't, char they didn't charge me. It was just, he, he started with that, but I didn't get charged for that. So what's this right here as far as the drop stops and that is $100 per current? You have yet to be charged, but the store can charge it at any time for the drop stops. So it's something that it could be pending. So I'm saying, what is this for? For I never got charged for it. I got a claim, but they end up denying the claim. I never got charged for it. Oh, okay. All right. So yeah. So yeah, I would. Um. Yeah. This decision is up to you. Ah. Yeah. Buddy got his cell phone number here, the general manager. Why you ain't called him? That's who I called and talked to. And this is what he sent you. But no, nah, okay, so let me ask you this. When you call him, do you ask him verbatim? I, I need a contract that states what the rate is that we agreed upon. And what does he say? I have said that I'm going to get with my boss or my supervisor and get with you one, and I still don't get one. 
So the general manager is telling you he's going to get with his boss. This is what the general manager is telling you. Yes, or no, or, or get back with Yadis to see why you don't have a full contract. So the general manager has to get back with the recruiter. Yes. And he never gets back with them. No. Yeah, man. I've been asking I, for yeah. it for months. Oh God. Yeah, they plan with you, so you can continue to get played with, or like my guys just finished working. Right now. About Thirty minutes ago. Yeah, so what you going to do? I'm going to have to let the contract go. I'm trying to, that's what I'm trying to get my truck from Cali running. That, well, not, it's not, not running. I just don't have a contract for it. Well, where are you going to get this contract at? I was going to try to regional right here in the Midwest somewhere. You don't want to drive the truck yourself, huh? Um, I would, but not in the winter, not in the snow. So what do you want to do, man? Because that, that down there in Mississippi ain't working. And then you can't even oversee it. You can't even show up. You can't even lean on them. I think based off conversation with you, I think you kind of passive too. This is a male-dominated industry. I'm just been listening. Like, I don't want to tell you because I'm new. No, no, I'm no. No, not, not passive with me. I can tell you passive with them. I would at least threaten them. They ain't going to pay you no way. I, I threaten them to leave a bunch of times. I mean. Oh, no, no, no. That's not a threat. They don't care about that. They know you ain't going nowhere because you still there. Threaten to leave you. Man, they don't care about that. They ain't worried about that because you still there. It's already sweet. They already know you sweet. So the only thing is to do is walk away. Pretty much. But you're gonna have to tough you're gonna have to toughen up. You're gonna have to toughen up. You're gonna have to educate yourself. You already gonna be mistreated because you're a woman. And that's facts. You new to the channel, so you know I've always taught. I, I don't get into it lately, but last year I did a lot of streams on how this industry is cutthroat. I I educate my people to take because this is what this industry is about, and you are a result of it. Just on the other end, like the guy I had come up here, he was talking about the contract with the broker man. And this is prime example of what I'm talking about, how cutthroat this industry is. So you got to be just as cutthroat. You got to be equally cutthroat because everybody's looking to take advantage of everybody in this industry. I saw that very early on. And this is prime example. They've been taking advantage of you since day one. They didn't even send you a, 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 they sent you a blank contract and told you some shit. Now you telling me everybody else, I could give a damn. They probably playing everybody like that. But who's to say? They may not, they may not be making fit. They may be making more because they tell well, you, man, don't, don't, don't discuss what you getting paid. Everybody tells, tells every contractor that. They could just be telling you what they want you to hear. Stop looking at the comments. This is my first time doing this, but I've been watching you. I've been waiting to be able to call and get in, so I'm happy All I right. got in. Why are you up here? We, you got to hold you accountable too, though. That's right. You need I'll a lot. You got. You you got. You got. I don't even know where to start with you, to be honest with you. Like, like one, you you need to figure out what you want to do. All right. 
Two, you need to educate yourself so that when you go into these meetings and you talk with these recruiters, now you see that people will take advantage of you. This is the industry. You have to be sharp. You have to know what you're talking about. You have to understand these contracts. You have to read these contracts. They don't even have an arbitration clause in the agreement. Normally, when you look at a contract, it'll say, you know what? If we come into agreements before we, we go to lawsuit way, we have to agree that it first must go through arbitration and we well, basically some type of mediation, right? To come up with some type of resolve. They talk about some good faith stuff. Good faith? Ain't no good faith. You've been extorting me this whole time. How many drop routes have you had? I haven't got I haven't got charged for any drop routes. Have you dropped any routes? Um, no, not really. They just started talking about the drop routes in like December, November. No, that's when what about pressing trying to get it's like nineteen stops, and my guys were out there all day. What about what about drop stops? Have you ever been charged for drop stops? No. So what have you been charged for as far as? I haven't been charged for anything as far as penalties besides uh, the guy, $20 for the guys putting um, the uh, the recyclables outside of the trailer. For not putting the hallways in the trailer. And then every claim you've paid for out of pocket. No, it come out the business money. The business no, no, no. I'm was standing and paying for itself. No, it's just no, right, 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 right. But, but that, the, you, you're missing the point. So I'm saying the claims that you come across, you've paid for them. The business is paid for them, right? Yes. You pay for them out of pocket. You didn't go through your insurance. No. Okay, that's what I'm asking you. Okay. Yeah, I think you should walk away. If you're not, if it's not, I'm gonna be honest with you. Let me see something. How long does it take your guys to do 10 stops? Depends on the distance of the stops. But they're usually out there from 7 in the morning till at least 4 or 5. They just finished 30 minutes ago, right? Yep. They, had, they, don't, um, they, don't send, they don't send. So that's 8 o'clock Central Time, right? So boom, what time did they start this morning? How many stops did they have? They had 16 stops today. 16 stops and they started at what time? Um 7 this morning. That's what time they got to their first stop, or that's what time they got to the warehouse. That's what time they were able to start loading at the warehouse. 7:35, so 7:30, let's say, and they just finished at 8. So 12 and a half hours, 16 stops. And you paying they got 150 and 125. And you made fifty dollars a and stop. I them from other companies that were paying less than that. Well, so here's the thing. So you made eight hundred dollars today. So basically, what I was going to say, in order for you to make a decent amount of money, you got to get at least thirteen to fourteen stops. Anything less than thirteen, fourteen stops is not worth it. The stops fifty dollars just slow a stop. Down. The stops just slow down after Christmas until they're just starting it, to pick up this week. But from Christmas, here, until here's here's what I'm saying. Here's what I'm saying. Fifty dollars a stop is not a lot of money. All right. And here's what I'm saying to you. If you're an investor, you're running this business invest, you saw an opportunity that you're not in a market that you're not in. Why didn't you pick a better market that pays more money? Why did you pick a shitty market like Jackson, Mississippi? That we you know what I call uh, that on this channel? Me, I call that mi middle of America. I uh, met somebody that was out there working for somebody that was like, I know how I can get you a contract. I was leaving. <laughs> you met some stranger and you invested into what some stranger told you? Say it ain't so, ma'am. But you finna tell me so.
You 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 kind met of. some stranger. I'm gonna let you look. Go tell the story. Tell it. Kind of. You met a stranger and they told you how you can make some money. I'm listening. Was it a guy? Yes. Was he tall? Yes. Was he dark? <laughs> yes. All right. Okay. But it wasn't. It wasn't like. It wasn't like that. We were talking was, at a wedding. What? I was telling him I was cutting ties with the Amazon truck and the girl with the Amazon. Mm -hmm. And then he was working down there and a contractor left and he was like, man, a contractor just left. I can, I know the people to get you in. Gave me the number I called and it went from there. Gave me Yadis number and I called y Yadis and he just sent me all the information and it went from there. So he, the, the talk, the, the guy you met at the wedding finesse you, he started the whole finesse. He worked at the company too. What was his, uh, what's his task to the company? He used to run? He had a truck or something? Yeah, he had his own truck. You still in contact with this guy? Yes. Yeah. It's all dark, huh? No, I'm not in contact. It was it was just business. Oh, it was just business? Yeah. yeah. Right. But he left the company too. For for So why did he leave the company? So they was getting dicked out the money, I guess. So the guy who told you how you could make a lot of money left the company because he wasn't making no money. And you decided to stay. What does that make sense to that, man? He left. He had. He got other contracts and left. He's. He was working for someone. He wasn't the actual contractor. So you listen so to. A, you listen to a worker. Who's working for somebody who doesn't know what they're making because he's making a, a pay. He's a worker. So how can he tell an owner that they're going to make a lot of... Man, come on now. You listen to a stranger at a wedding who's a worker. He's making 125 like your guy. How can he tell me anything? Now you see how y'all just got over on you? Ma'am, you're gonna have to tough you have to listen, this is what you gotta do. I'm gonna tell you what you need to do. Why you need to toughen up? It was good in the beginning. Ain't no we're never good. It was No, it wasn't. Okay. You ain't got a contract. How was it, ma'am? Right. You don't right. even know what you're supposed to be making. I'm looking at extortion on the back end of this contract. So when was it ever good? All right, you made you some tools and you some, some fuse here and there. That qualifies as good because the moment the truck break down or and here's the crazy. You know what's even crazy about this, ma'am? Here's, here's what's crazy about this. When a truck break down, they bring us another huh. one. That, that's what I was going to say. How can they even put this into a contract when it's day truck? Exactly. Is they got damn truck. So they truck. Something happened to they truck and you miss a stop. You got to pay? No, if something <laughs> happened to they truck, <laughs> they'll bring another truck out or somebody else to come get the rest of it. So how do you miss a stop? So, I don't, I, so that's what I'm saying. That shit don't even make like sense. How do you miss a stop? They send you a load and you don't show up or you got your that's, guys that, that's, that's a That's a that's missed a route. route. So, right, that's a drop that's route, route, but... Uh, I'm saying like, okay, but the stops, the only way you're going to miss some stops is if you are already out. You missed the route, you missed the route. The only way you're going to miss some stops is if you, I guess if they going to cover the cost of the truck breakdown, if you leave and decide to go home early. But the point that I'm trying to make is the whole contract is full. I agree. Yeah, so man, you're going to have to make a decision. Like, it ain't, to me, it ain't even worth doing. They playing with you. They won't even send you a contract because you don't have one. So you're going to have to have that tough conversation. I guess you're going to have to have it with them. You're going to have to have it with your guys. I think like, it's the more, the, the, the tougher the conversation is really with my guys. Because, like, <clears throat> they're going to be the one that's taking the bigger loss.
Yeah, they're going to be unemployed. They're going to be unemployed unless you let them take over the contract. How can I? I can't do that. How? That's subcontracting. I'm still responsible and liable. Man, man. I, 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 you know, I. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, this contract right here to me is just it's just it's just not worth it. You need to uh educate yourself so that you know when you're being misled and you need to just be a little bit more ruthless. Well, a lot more ruthless, I should say. You got any questions for me? Now's the time. What advice do you have for my other truck? That's just sitting. I'm trying so, to get. So you, so you bought a truck, what online? No, I went down there and bought it. I'm originally from California. So you flew down there and bought it. Mm -hmm. What, what, what is it? What kind? What, what year it's is it? What, what I'm saying? What year? It's a 2010 Hino. Two six eight or three three eight. Two six eight. Two six eight. You sure? Yes. 2010, you know, 268, 2010, and it's just sitting at the dealership still? Or? No, it's sitting at um, my brother's tow yard. So it's sitting at your brother's tow yard. It's paid for outright, or are you paying a note on it? It's paid for. What you pay for it? 13000 Thousand? Yeah. That's pretty cheap. Well, you said it's a 2010, so. Uh, well, what do you plan to do with it? Trying to get it up and running, making some money. Doing what, though? I'm spending a lot of time with you, man. I'm trying to understand what your Because uh, here's the thing. I asked you a question earlier. What led you to this? And you really didn't even answer the question for me. Like, what led you to box trucking? Because I'm and then another thing, I'm trying to figure out what did you do before this that you just got money just be going buy stuff and investing and stuff and then you could just well, sit at I didn't home. buy a box truck. I went in straight in with the lease. It didn't come in. It just started. I went in, picked up my truck, and just started working. So the what else do you do? Like what else? LLC what, and all that. So what else do you do? I haven't been doing nothing since the pandemic. But before that, I used to work for the water department in California. So you just so you just got money sitting around. I don't have any money sitting around. You just bought a box truck for thirteen thousand cash. I made that off the uh, the uh, the the, other, load, the, the, Miss, the Mississippi. So now you tapped out. Yep. So do you have any working capital? A little. All right. So let me ask you this. What do you expect to make out of this box truck, honestly? What do you mean? What do I, like how much money am I expecting to make? Yeah, because you you bought a box truck, right? You bought yeah. a box truck, right? So you have a business plan then, right? Or did you buy the box truck blind with no plan at all? I bought a box truck blind with no plan at all, with a mental what? plan and not a plan on paper. Okay, what's the mental plan? Um, to let it run regional. That's your plan? Right. Yeah. Run regional doing what, ma'am? Picking up and dropping off stuff. That's okay. That's your plan. Or if I can do a, a, a better contract out here doing the uh, final mile delivery. A real contract, I should say. All right, let's let's start here. Do you understand everything you can do with a box truck, a 26 foot box truck? Yes. Okay, what can you do with a 26 foot box truck? You can move people, you can go over the road. Um, you can do what I'm doing now, the appliance deliveries. Um, you can do local curbside. You, you can do Amazon. You can do Amazon. All right. 
So since you have a general understanding of every, you could do okay. So since you have a general understanding of what a box truck, what you could do with a box truck. The best thing would be for me to get a curbside contract, but I don't even know where to begin and start with for that. All right. So you got a box truck out in California. You need to get it. What market do you want to run it in? Because it seems like you don't you you got stuff going in Mississippi. You ain't even don't even live in Mississippi. Where do you plan on well, getting? Where do you want this truck to run at? In Ohio area, the Midwest area. In Ohio, right? Running locally, right? Have you looked into that market to see if there's opportunities out there? What part of Ohio? Cleveland, Columbus, Akron, Cleveland. Cincinnati, Cleveland. Cleveland. Are you in Cleveland? Yes. Okay. So have you looked into opportunities out in Cleveland to see if any exist? I don't know the companies that are that have the contracts out here. Okay. Well, that's easy. We can tell you the companies. But what's the plan? Yeah. To apply to the companies. What, what you mean, what's the plan? All right, so get your box truck from California and get it to Ohio. It can't do shit if you want to make money in Ohio and it's sitting out in, in California. If your plan well, was to get it, I, make try, a I was going to try to get a load to bring back, so I'm not just paying for the truck to come back. So I was going to try to bring a load back this way, but that didn't work out for me. Does the truck have insurance? Well, it got to have insurance. You got your authority, right? So you got a million, a million, what, a hundred? The truck does not have insurance yet. They don't have insurance yet. Hold on. Well, that's, I use that. I use my uh, insurance off my spirit contract for that. You did what? I use my insurance for my truck that I got in Mississippi. So, so your broker, wait. So you gave your broker the insurance that you're paying for a leased on contract with Spirit to your broker to file for your authority to go active? Is that what you're telling me? I just called the insurance company and said, um, I applied for MC number and they said I need a, a electronic filing. Do I have the required insurance for that? And they said yes and they filed it. All right, what insurance do you have? True North. I don't even think that's... Um... True North. So this is the insurance that you have through Spirit, right? Yes. So when you call, do you have a broker? No. So who did you call to do the filings? So this, 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 this filing is through the company, the lease on. So your truck that you bought has no insurance on it. I haven't got the insurance on it because it's just sitting. Oh, my God. Don't matter. I got two trucks that's been sitting since three years, and they, get, they insured. Well, insurance is high. If I'm not moving it, it's not making me no welcome to well, Welcome to business. Ding, 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 ding. You tweaking. Okay. I got two trucks that's novelties. And I pay an insurance every month. Your insurance is through the lease on. That truck that you have has no insurance. So how are you gonna run anything? The truck ain't even insured. What you gonna how are you gonna get a load from California back to Ohio or the truck ain't got no insurance? I'm gonna get insurance once I figure out what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna get the insurance. I just don't know. Okay, so what so when do. you quit when you quit this company, this insurance, they're gonna in 24 hours, this is gonna be over with. You understand that, right? Mm-hmm. What the, the MC this, authority is gonna be? So no, the MC is yours, but this insurance is what you're paying through the lease on company. Once you terminate that, then they not you're not gonna be paying um, a, what are you pay four hundred dollars a week. I hear what you listen to me. Listen 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 to what I'm saying. 
You're paying them $400 a week. Mm-hmm. $1,600 a month. Mm-hmm. Right? And that North Shore, or whatever the name of the company is, that's through Spirit. Right? When you walk away from Spirit, this is over with. You don't even have a broker. You have no insurance on your truck whatsoever. You have to get insurance on your truck. It has to be filed so that you can be active the correct way. To be honest with you, I've never even seen nothing like this to even know if this is if this is supposed to even be what it is right now. I don't even know if this is even legal. Or possible, it's possible, but is it legal? I don't know. I never. How is, it, how is it not legal? Here's what I'm saying, ma'am. This is insurance that you pay because you're running leased on. This is companies that they have connections with. Everything that you're doing is through them. The truck is through them. The insurance is through them. Everything is through them. They're charging you for everything. You I'm just said, man. My this is what I'm saying. I, this is what I'm saying, ma'am. Before you got the MC, you were running under their authority. Technically, you're probably still running under their authority. You're paying insurance. You have insurance. You're paying it through them. But the moment you walk away, all that's over with. So once they, once it goes over with, in 24 hours, you're going to go to not active. 24 hours. It's going to be like that. Because you're paying insurance through your settlements. Every time you get a settlement, they charge you four hundred dollars. You need insurance on your truck, so that when you walk away from them, you don't have a lapse. You don't want to have a lapse in coverage. So you're going to be paying at some point for a short amount of time. You're going to be paying for two insurances. You're going to have to go get that truck insured. You're going to have to put a down payment. If you were running under there, uh, uh, ma'am, you kind of you you kind of all over the place, ma'am. Well, I figured that since I, if I got my authority, it would start aging. It is aging, but you don't. It is aging, but you don't want to have a lapse, ma'am. You don't want your coverage to but lapse. The lapse only gonna come but here, but you know them. what? Before I leave them, ma'am. Once you leave them, it's a wrap. Once I it can't my insurance that I use, ma'am. You have no insurance. That's I the know, point. But I'm, Okay. <laughs> you have no insurance. That's the point. If you cut ties with them today, they're going to close everything out. That insurance company, North, whoever they is, is going to be notified within 24 hours. They're going to pull the plug. It's over with. The MC number is yours, correct? The DOT number is yours. But at some point, you're going to have to have double coverage for a short period of time so that when you do walk away from them, there's no lapse in coverage. I'm okay with the double insurance. I just couldn't afford it. My truck has been sitting for two months, three months since well, November. That's a, that's a personal problem. Well, in their case, it's not a personal problem. It's a business problem. It was a decision that you made for your business. You jumped the gun without a plan. You can't even relocate that truck from California back to Ohio without insurance. That's a commercial. Listen, <laughs> you need to find a broker, commercial insurance broker, and you need to have them start shopping for you some type of insurance. You need to put some insurance on that truck. You don't have any insurance on that truck. You have insurance on the truck that you're renting from Spirit. Mm-hmm. Spirit is, listen to me. Spirit 
has a contract with Lowe's. You know how much it's costing them? You don't know? Nothing. Because you paying for everything. You and everybody else. They ain't paying for nothing. You got a truck sitting out there with no insurance. You need to find you a broker. You need to put some insurance on that truck. So now, it's almost like you got to stay with them because you don't want your, your... I mean, you can let it lapse if you want to. I mean, it's your business. You can do what you want to do. You know, but, you know. You need to put some insurance on that truck. You can't do nothing with that truck until it's insured. So the first step is get some insurance. Yeah, get some insurance. You still gonna run under this company? You got it. You incorporated this company down in Mississippi? Yes. Why'd you do that? Um, so I didn't have to get the uh MC number from the gate in the beginning. They didn't require you to get an MC number, right? If the, if the company was from out of state? If the company was from out of state? Yeah. All right, so boom. So let me ask you this. Was that an intrastate contract? Did they, did they have an MC number on that truck at all when they were running? Yeah. It was Spirit's MC number, right? Oh, I don't know. If the, let me look. I got that too. Let me. Let me. Let me ask. Have you ever seen a truck that you, that operates under your uh, for you? Have you ever seen it in action at all? Yeah, I, I rode on it. I, I went down there for two weeks and rode the what, contract. Was, the, was there any magnets on the doors of the truck? The truck say Lowe's. I'm gonna see if I'm gonna see. I'm, I got a picture. Let me look and see. If they Shout out to Jayco. So the truck is wrapped with Lowe's. Yeah. The box is wrapped or it just says Lowe's on the door with a DOT number? Or you got pictures of it? I'm pretty sure you yeah. got pictures of it. You took pictures because I'm pretty sure you wanted to post up on Instagram. Just got my LLC and started my box truck business. Anything. No. So you ain't no. posted. So you didn't po take no, no pictures and post it on Instagram and say just start my box no. truck business. No. Nope. All right. Well, but you took some pictures, though. I bet you took some pictures. I took some pictures right. for my own memory. Email me, email me the pictures. I want to see what the truck look like. I want to see what's on the dough. I want to <laughs> see what's on the dough. I want to see what it say on the dough. I want to see what the, the numbers, if it's numbers or anything on the dough. Because I want to understand what's going on down here. I'm trying to understand what's going on. Because a lot of things, the more I dig, the more I find out. You got a truck, you ain't got no insurance. You talking about catching a load cross country from California back to Ohio. No, but I wasn't going to take the load without the insurance. I wasn't going to take the load without the insurance at you all. You never told me the truck didn't have insurance until I continued to inquire to find out. Yes, but I, I was going to get my own insurance on the truck because I don't even want nothing to happen to the truck and it's not covered. So I was going to get insurance. I just didn't put insurance on that truck because it's not going anywhere. It's just sitting right now. Yeah, you need to get insurance on that truck. They're wrapped and low. No, they don't have a... Um... No, they don't have an MC or DOT number on on it, on the door. What about like on the, right on the box, right? Right behind the cab, at the bottom, on the box. You don't see nothing? You look. You looking in your phone? Yeah. Hold your phone up to the screen. Let me see. No, you pull it. All right, back up a little bit. The glare. All right, stand still. Yeah, nah. You, oh, wait, hold on. There you go. All right. You didn't get a picture of the cat? See if you can send me a picture of the cat. 
the picture that I have of the cab is not the full cab. Hmm. Hey, that truck ain't got nothing on it. They ain't even got a DOT number on it. Are those trucks leased or those trucks through a rental, like a rental company, like they Ryder? Leased, they leased through Ryder and Penske. All right, ma'am. But you know, I don't particularly have to contract through Ryder or Penske. I, I, I get that. They 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 I, I know how it works. I know how it works, ma'am. Uh get insurance for your truck. You need to start working on that first thing Monday morning. Okay. All right, but you're saying you don't have no money, so I don't I don't know what you're gonna do. I didn't but... say I didn't have no money to get insurance. Oh, well, you got you got some money. I hope you got a couple grand. When this is your de deposit gonna be a couple grand. How old are you about? I don't want to say how old are you. I don't want to say you in same age as you. Forty three. Forty four. Oh, I'll be forty four in about. What's today's day? Like next week sometime. But okay. So you gonna have to come up with a down payment. You know, for the insurance. You are gonna obviously have to have a some money to get the truck from California to Ohio fuel that's gonna be a couple grand right there uh I was trying to bring a load back but yeah but I mean you know once you know you get everything up and up and you know you might be a, I, listen you done did stuff so kind of ass backwards you know at this point you know it is it is what it is so you need to get on the phone Monday morning try to get you some insurance and start there uh the next thing you need to do you need to figure out what you're gonna do with this contract Once you get the truck back, you say you want to do curbside. I will look into some curbside companies, some, some companies that have curbside opportunities. T Force, RNL. You're not gonna be able to get RNL. You probably could get some with T Force. That season is about to kick back up. Uh, you could look at some other opportunities out there in Cleveland. You know what I'm saying? Uh, also, do more research on your market. You need to do a business plan. I think you need to educate yourself just period on this industry. I think you lack industry. I think you I think you lack knowledge on the industry and that's why you had the issue that you had. You was just a sweet lick for them and they took advantage of you. And people gonna continue to take advantage of you unless you educate yourself and, and you a woman. You a woman, so just that right there alone and that you just you just green. I had a lady that followed the channel. She don't, I see top stuff every now and again. I had to, she was having issues. I had to tell her she needed to hire a male. When she did that, things started to work better for her. Now, I'm not saying that's what you need to do, but I'm just giving, you know, I'm just letting you know what the industry, what this, this is a male dominated industry that's very, very cutthroat. You got any more, anything else for me? Because I need you to no. know next week when this call and next, maybe next week, we got the next. Did you get the insurance? Did you relocate the truck? How are you going to relocate the truck? You going to drive it back yourself? No, I have somebody else going to drive it back. Why? I don't know. Why you don't drive it? I don't know. When I first bought it, that was the plan. You think you're too good to drive your own truck? No, I drove it. How much I you gonna have to? When I bought it, I drove. How, how much you gonna pay somebody to drive the truck back? I think it's one fifty a day. That's it. Where you how find this person at? To? Where you find somebody at the drive one fifty a day? <laughs> how much am I supposed to pay? No, that's what they that's what they said that that's what they offered. My sister boyfriend is a truck driver. He said he could give me a driver to drive it back for one fifty a day. All right. Well, I, I throw my hands in the air right now. I don't Okay, we'll get you got to drive one fifty a day. All right. You got enough working capital though. You got so once the, you pay the one fifty a day, 
get the truck back in a couple days, three, four days, whatever. You gonna have enough working capital to get something up and going? No. So once you put the insurance, because the insurance going, the down payment gonna be a couple grand probably, right? It's gonna be a couple grand in fuel, right? You're gonna spend four fifty to six hundred to get the truck back in labor. So after all these costs, you you you're tapped out, basically is what you're saying. Because you know you're not gonna get paid for the the spirit shit. So you was gonna bring the truck over there just to park it again. But then No, I'm not gonna park it. But you say you don't have no work. So, so I'm telling you what you do. That's why I ask you who's driving the truck back. You need to cut costs. Because guess what? When that guy drives the truck to Ohio, is he from California? So that means you got you right. to put him on a flight back. You're talking to Mark, man. So now you got to put him on a one-way flight. From Ohio back to California. This is what you need to do. You need to take a spirit flight or a frontier flight, whichever is cheaper. And you need to go out there and you need to you need to say a prayer. You need to pray. Because that's a good five hour flight, maybe five and a half. Was it five and a half? From Ohio, five about hours. five and a half. Five. You need to pray that the truck makes it from California back to Ohio. That's a long trek. Did you get the truck diagnosed before you purchased it? No, but I did get it um serviced. And what did they say? Did they say any issues was with it, wrong with it? Um it got some work done on it, um the tire seals, um any powertrain issues? Things. No. Nothing under the hood got fixed. Nothing under underneath the truck. No. Uh, one of the belts where they replaced the belt. Okay. And the pulley, because the pulley they said the pulley probably was shredding the belt. And how many miles is on this truck? Almost two hundred thousand. Two hundred. And it's you got registration. You got plates for it, right? Yep. Out of where? California? Mississippi. California can't be registered in California because it doesn't have the deaf system. Right. That's right. You got the uh, AB. Yeah. That's truck 2 You can't even, you can't even, they won't even let you run that truck out there. I think Gavin Newsom got a law where she, the truck got to be like 2015 or 2016. It. Right. You can't run it. So you don't feel comfortable driving that truck back, do you? Just not through the snow. I don't mind driving. Just not through the snow. But you from Ohio. How you don't drive through the snow? I'm from California. Oh, you're from California? Yeah. Oh, my God. All right, man. Uh, you know, you need to catch a flight. You need to drive that truck back yourself. You need to cut all costs because you saying once you get the truck back, shit, you ain't going to have no money to do nothing with it no way. Unless you just want to sell it. No. No? I don't want to sell it. Did you watch my live stream yesterday? Um, I think I... Yes, I did. I was on there in the comments. So you watched my live stream yesterday, right? Yes, I did. Yeah, I did. You don't have any working capital. You finna take your last to get the truck back cross country if it make it. I would drive the truck if I were you. I think you need to cut costs. 
If you don't feel comfortable, don't do it. But once you get the truck back, you telling me you don't have the capital to, because if you get a contract, you're gonna need money. Whatever you do, you're not gonna get paid for three weeks, most likely. So even if you get another final mile contract up that way, you still gotta pay your guys. You still gotta put fuel in the tank. Insurance coming right back around the corner. So right when insurance is hitting again, you'll probably be making your first settlement, getting your first settlement. That's if you can onboard within a week, which is highly unlikely. Because if you were to get insurance, let's say Monday, you're going to spend all next week relocating the truck. You start applying for shit. It's going to take a week to, let's say minimum week to go through the onboarding process. That's the week after next. It's going to be three weeks before you get your first settlement, all while you're uh, uh, paying the cost. It costs to operate whatever it is you just decide to do or you land in. And right when you get that first settlement, insurance is going to be due again. So I said all that to say this, you get the truck back successfully, you know what's the best way to kind of defeat a lot of that cost? All right. I'm going to let you think about it. I'm going to let you answer it. To what, sell it? No, I didn't say sell it. Oh, to what? Getting it yourself. And this goes back to the original question I asked you, what led you to getting into this business? You still haven't answered that question. I asked you twice in the past, I don't know how hour I've been on the line with you. I don't know. Just guess sitting at home in the pandemic, trying to figure out something, a way to make some money. The pen, but you got to. Okay, I get that point. But that's what that's 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 what led you to it. Sitting around thinking of some ways to get some money. That's your answer. I mean, of course, the social media and all the other stuff. YouTube's watching it. I asked you earlier who you was watching. You said nobody. So but you were watching a particular person. I've just been like glancing. I haven't been studying anybody. I originally uh, went in with this girl. We did Amazon for a little while. Then we hired people to do it. We lost that contract. It went over the road. Um, whoa, 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 wait, wait. You said you did say you did Amazon Relay, right? Yeah. And um, where'd you Michigan. where'd you do that at? In Michigan. In Michigan. Um, and you said we, so you had a partner with that? Yeah. What truck would y'all use? Y'all was renting the truck? No, we purchased the truck. So where's that truck? When I left the partnership, the truck got left there. Wait, 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 wait. I left it with the, for my partner. When you say partner, you talking about like business partner or business partner slash relationship partner or no, it wasn't a relationship partner. All right, so 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 you started a business with somebody else. So y'all put into the business to start the business, right? Mm hmm So why you so you invested into that business, right? Yeah. So is that business still up and operational? No. So it dissolved. So where's the truck? Probably repo. You got a story. So now I was finna let you go, but now I want to know this story. When were you doing? When were you running this? Twenty. 2022 maybe 2022 i think so you started I was, amazon I was, I was only in business with the girl for like six months it was another girl yeah
So y'all saw some Instagram. Who, 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 what? <laughs> well, she had other multiple businesses and we just tried the truck oh. and transportation. Oh business. man, she she was one of them, huh? She was one of them? Multiple streams of income women? Yes. Where'd you meet her at? Uh, friend of the family. And she pitched you this idea to start a box truck business, right? Yes. And y'all equally invested into it? No, we didn't equally invest. <laughs> did who who invested more? She did. And what ultimately what was the what led y'all to dissolving that, the business? That business I was more just the investor just putting money. I wasn't a hundred percent tied into the business. I wasn't a hundred percent involved into the business on the everyday operation. So, so when I'm, so what I'm asking you is why did the business dissolve? Um, I left because I didn't like the way she ran the business. Uh, once again, you said the business, you, do you know if the business is still running? Or you don't know? I don't know. I don't think it's still running. All right. So, so what I'm asking you is, you said you were a partner. You didn't left. You left because you didn't like the way she was running the business. Mm -hmm. So y'all had a dispute. We didn't have a dispute. I just walked away. Were you not getting paid? Or? Yeah, nobody was getting paid. It was, it was just all ran bad. It was a bad investment. It was just all ran bad. So it was in Michigan. You were running Amazon Relay with a y'all purchased a truck. Mm -hmm. Through where'd y'all purchase the truck from? Ford. It was a brand new truck, a ninety thousand dollar truck. Y'all purchased a brand new truck. Yeah, from Ford. Why everybody don't buy a new truck? I've been telling people don't buy a new truck. So this was during the pandemic, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. Y'all must have been watching some Instagram reels or some shit. You said you don't watch nobody, but I know it's cap. Because well, I don't watch nobody specific. Here, That's all I'm here, saying. Here, uh, but see, here's what I'm saying. And this is why I'm spending so much time, because your story is interesting. And I think it's something that people need to hear. Because these stories, it's a lot of these types of stories. And this is a great example of... What I always tell people, understand what you invest in. Here. You y'all saw a bunch of videos and Instagram posts about trucking, Amazon, box truck, whatever. You got in, y'all went out and bought a brand new truck, ninety thousand dollar Ford, probably an F six fifty. Or F750, which one was it? A 650 or a 750? Probably a 650. A F650, under the business, you co-signed for it, right? You guaranteed it, right? Nope. Who guaranteed it? She did? Yeah. So let me ask you this. So she basically was broke. She just needed some, some cash. You had cash. How much cash did you invest? 20? Or ten. No. Uh four. Four? Then twelve. Uh six thousand dollars. That's it? So yeah. Y'all so y'all start this business. Were you on the corporation? Was it an yeah. LLC or or corp? A LLC. A LLC or LLP? <laughs> A LLC. All right. But you were on there, right? Yes. Let me ask you this. Were you on the were you authorized on the business bank account? Nope. Now, the reason why I'm gonna ask you all this is to tie in to the spirit thing. Do you see what the parallel is here? Mm -hmm. 
No, go ahead and tell me. You sweet. You don't know what's going on with that bitch. And she telling you one thing, but it could be another. You don't even have the credentials to see what's coming in or what's going out. You just going off what she's telling you. You're a partner. You took $6,000 and you invested it. Did she tell you what percentage of that business you own? Did y'all come up with the ratio? You sent me some paperwork. Yeah. Okay, what, per what percentage of the business did you own? Um, I don't remember. I think it was like 30. 30%. Like 30%. So $6,000 got you 30%. Now, did you ever get anything? Did you ever receive any money? No. I probably got like $2,000 back. At one time? No. Just over the period of what? The course of, like, how long was this partnership in play? I left in six months. It was just, it was going down. People was calling her about uh, their payment. It was just, I didn't like the way she did business, so I just walked away. Who was calling them about the payment? Ford? Employees. Employees? How many, y'all ain't had one truck. So how many employees y'all had, like two or three? After Amazon had started going, we had two. After Amazon had started going across the road because we lost the Amazon contract. How y'all lose Amazon? It's like a grading system. They were going late. They got, a, they, got a, they got a metric system, right? So that's what I'm mm -hmm. asking you. So y'all was late and probably dropping routes it wasn't, and shit like it was that. Employees. No, it's y'all. You can't blame it on the employee. Amazon don't care about that. It's the business. You hired the employees. Yeah. You can't blame it on the employees. That's on you. Because guess what? If the employees don't show up, guess who got to get their butt on the truck? You. But Amazon system is strict, so even if they late, I guess this... So y'all sent the truck yeah, we over the road. For about two weeks, Amazon, in the beginning. So y'all did what for two weeks? Oh, you were there Worked for two weeks? For two weeks. But how long did Amazon last? A couple months? Yeah. All right. About so then y'all, then y'all sent the truck over the road when y'all lost Amazon. Mm-hmm. And then what happened there? That's when I started cutting ties. Why? This is like a testimonial. Yeah. This is this is pretty good, interesting to be honest with you. Because I didn't like her the way she did business. And how long did you know her before you invested with her? About a year. Not even a year. <sighs> About nine months. And you just trusted her, huh? But you you don't you don't know if the, you don't you don't know if that truck is still running or not. What was the name of the company? I'm almost, uh, you don't even know the name of the company you own? 30% of? I, 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 hold on. I want to tell you very bad. <laughs> oh, man. You married, ma'am? No. I keep calling you ma'am. You my damn age. I'm not, I'm not no old lady. You 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 single? Yeah. You need to you need to and I'm not actually I'm not I'm not trying to get into your personal business. I'm just I was gonna say if you had like a male, like a boyfriend or something, I would I was gonna tell you that you should probably include him into your uh, business dealings. That way you have <laughs> I think you t what's the name of this company? I'm looking right now. 
That's crazy you don't know the name of your own company, man. I just want to know if the company's still up in operation because I want to see if she gaffled you or not. This is crazy, man. This is what the pandemic did. You see what the pandemic did to us? And it didn't do nothing to me. It, it made me it made me happy. But I'm just including myself because I'm black. But you see what the pandemic did. You see what happens when you invest into something that you don't understand? Adapt Transportation Service. Adapt Transportation Service. A-D-E-P-T. It's A-D-E-P-T Transportation Service. Ma'am, do you see what the, the pandemic did to us as a people? Yep. Do you understand why it's important to understand what you're investing in? Adept transportation? Which Where is it out of? Cincinnati, Jackson, Mississippi, or Oak Park, Michigan? Michigan. Oak Park, Michigan? Yeah. Adept Transportation Services, INC? Yeah. I thought you said it was an LLC. Thought it was an LLC. Two two thirteen ten Coolidge Highway. Yep. Yeah. This company's still up in I don't care about working out work. What are they talking about? <laughs> she ain't coming clean. They crazy. Like Everything look okay to me. MC still active? Yep. Insurance active too. Yeah, I don't know. I just walked away. <laughs> hey, man. You just throwing money away, man. I feel kind of bad for you, man. You just gave her money. She didn't give you shit. All because what? She wasn't paying you, right? She wasn't giving you no money. That's why you walked away, right? I walked away because I didn't like the way she did business. But you weren't getting paid. The business, I, no, it was, it was in the beginning stages of it. It wasn't really making no money at the beginning. How could you determine that, though? She didn't give you access to anything. Man, I'm gonna be honest with you, and then I'm gonna let you go. Be frank with you, all right? I spent, what, a couple hours with you? Yeah. And I'm, I'm being nice to you. I don't wanna, you know, beat you up. I'm gonna keep it, I'm gonna be fun, I'm gonna keep it funky with you. Don't take this the wrong way. I don't think you cut out for it. I think you will be great in something, it's probably not this. And here's the reason why, and I'm not trying to kill your dreams, but based on everything you told me, just me trying to understand you, I think this industry 
is going to continue to chew you up and spit you out. I think you're too nice, you're too kind, you don't do the proper research, and you just you just don't have that. You just don't have it in you. When I say don't have it in you, you just don't have that monster in you that it takes to survive in this industry. You've been taken advantage of too many times. You, you, you're a victim. In every situation, you were a victim. When th with that first lady, you were a victim. With this, you're a victim. All of it's due to you, you know what I'm saying? But I think you've been you getting taken advantage of. You can you allow yourself to be taken advantage of and you got corporate companies taking advantage of you and you got individuals taking advantage of you because I think you're just too nice. I could tell you're a really really nice person. And in this business you nice guys finish super duper last. So some things are going to have to change in order for you to be successful. One, you're going to have to understand what you invest in. You have to do the research. You're going to have to understand because as you come across more people and they see you green, they're going to continue to take advantage of you. You don't necessarily have to turn into a mean and evil person, right? Because if you know, you know what I'm saying, the business and know the industry you'll prevent yourself from being taken advantage of and people won't prey on you as much as they've been preying on you. You want to invest into something, you know, you want to make some money. I, I don't know, you know, and here's the thing. Everybody wants to invest in to business, to make money, entrepreneur, you know, generational wealth, whatever, this, that, and the third. I'm going I'm to keep it funky with you. One box truck ain't going to get you generational wealth. It's not. You've been at it, what, two years now, and... Amazon, Final Mile, bought a box truck, partnership. So even with you doing Amazon from two years ago, you were doing trucking two years ago, even to the conversation that we have, we are having here two years later, your lack of knowledge in this industry is... It's like you're a novice. It's like you never did anything in this industry before. And you've ran Amazon. You've done over the road. You own a truck. You're running Final Mile in a whole nother state. You're just trying to make money without doing all the due diligence you need to do to be successful. There's no way I would run a final mile contract in another state as a novice. A novice, I should say, a novice. Not novice, a novice. Educate yourself, man. Educate yourself. And pardon. That contract, I don't think it's, you know, I don't think it's beneficial. I think it's causing more harm than it is good. Now, you made money today, right? Yeah. $800, so... I mean, that's up to you. You can do what you want with that contract, but you really don't, like there's nothing etched in stone. You have no paperwork. So you can do what you want. 
I'm not going to even advise you on that because you know I you know I wouldn't do it. Um, and now, as far as that truck, you need to put insurance on it. And then you said looking for T cars. When you get the when you when you get the truck over to to Ohio, yeah, you can look into some curbside stuff. You know, you can look into some curbside stuff, but I think you need to I think you need to educate yourself on just business in general as well as, you know, this business. I think you need to stop jumping the gun and just believe in people and just every single opportunity that's thrown at you, trusting and believing in people. I think you need to toughen up as well. I keep saying the same shit. I think you too just too passive. To be honest with you, I I think you know, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna keep it funky with you. I I think just you based off everything, you saying. are you no I, you are gullible. I don't think I know. You've the, the stories you've told, I've told this. You've told the stories of a gu, a gullible individual. I'm not investing shit with nobody I just met. Period. Why am I buying into your, your dreams? You ain't even did the research because you was watching somebody on Instagram and told you this bullshit. And then you go out and buy a brand new truck. So somebody's selling that person a dream and then they selling it to you because they don't have the capital to fully get into it. How you gonna buy a brand new truck during the pandemic, at the height of the pandemic? A brand new truck, a $100,000 truck. With the money that it costs to get in then, and I take a partnership with somebody for fucking $6,000 for 30%, that means she was broke as fuck and desperate. 30% for $6,000, you just went and purchased a $100,000 truck? $6,000? As soon as somebody would have came to me with that bullshit, I would have desperation all over their face. They desperate. They ain't got shit. They willing to take whatever and offer me whatever. That's gullible. You can buy into a trucking business for six thousand dollars for thirty percent with a brand new truck, the insurance, the operational costs. That's gullible. You didn't think that through. In hindsight of listening to me talk to you, it probably makes sense now, right? Yeah. Six grand? Six. What can she do with six grand? Yeah, so yeah, gullible. So when I say, and I'm not trying to, you know, rain on your parade, I'm just keeping it a buck with you. I'm not, you know, I'm not trying to hurt your feelings. I'm not trying to do none of that. But I don't want to see you continue to be taken advantage of. And this is an industry that people take advantage of people. Clearly. And I've been saying this shit for the longest. You're just a living testament of shit that I've been telling people. I t Listen, I tell people to take advantage of people. Before you came up, I told a guy to take advantage of the broker. Forget the broker. Get in. Because this is the way the industry is. You either eat or you get eaten. You don't take advantage of the people that make you money. Your employees, you do right by your employees. But anybody that's a competitor... You take care of people that take care of you, but I sure I thought you were gonna have some better advice than that. What more advice do you want me to give you? Ma'am, you've been doing this for two years and you don't know nothing. Here's the thing. 
I'm not going to tell you some shit because you want to hear it. See, you just told me you want to hear. You want me to tell you something you want to hear. I'm not going to tell you what you want to hear. I'm going to tell you what you need to hear. You know why? There's no benefit. Wow. Listen, whether you succeed or whether you fail, it doesn't. I, I'm not selling you. I've spent how much? How much time have I spent with you? A long time. All right. So you got people that's out here that charge people. I I talked to a guy today. He paid two thousand dollars for a mentorship, and he said he was on the phone with the guy less than twenty minutes. I just ain't got shit to do tonight. If I had something to do, I'd have been got off with you. But people are, you've been holding the audience. So this is a learning and teaching moment for people. I go in on people a lot harder. I'm showing you mercy and grace because I feel bad for you. The reason why I feel, listen. The strong has to show compassion for the weak. Some people I just feel like, especially some of these guys that come up here, yeah, they deserve it. I just think, just from listening to you, I just think you're a nice person. The last thing I think you need to be held accountable in a tough way. I don't, I don't think that. And the reason why I'm not doing that to you because I just think that this industry is too harsh for you. So there's no reason for me to do it, you know, with a thought that you can still that that you still have a place in this industry i think you've tried it multitude of times and i think you 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 see you look for opportunities you take your money and you invest and that's as far as you take it When you in business, I give a person, listen, you I give a person six thousand dollars, and the last thing I'm doing is walking away because I don't like the way she do business. What? I gave you my money, I don't like the way you do business. We so called partners. No, we need to we need to have a conversation. And if I do exit, I need you to buy my position out. So when I say you don't understand and you don't like you don't walk away if you are a partner in that business listen i don't want to be partners no more you got to buy my position out even if she buy it out for what your initial uh entry cost was so be it you got to buy my position out if you got paperwork you say you got paperwork you got a contract she got to buy that position out you walked away and i look up this company is still up and operational so you just gave her free money So when it goes back to talking about gullible and passive, this is what I'm talking about. And we can fast forward to a year and a half later when you started with spirit, the shit that's going on there. They know what you talk, what you talking about when you hit them up, asking them about the contract, the rates, and they sending you blank contracts. That's an insult. You're asking them directly, yo, I signed, there was no numbers or no rates on here. Oh, I'm going to get back to you. You said this has been going on for months. And you said the guy ain't even answering for you no more. But he stopped answering the minute I got on board. I was talking to the I, guy, so, Matt. So, so, so here's what I'm saying. You running a company down there. You got a contract running down there, right? When the last time you've been down there? Um, I went for Christmas. Right after Christmas. So two months ago. Yeah. And did you go to the office? So I went to Lowe's. There ain't no office. You went to the store. Yeah. Did you go to Spirit? No, I never been to Spirit. You've never been to Spirit. No. So the 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 exact the 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 manager that you communicate with via email, you've never been. T so let me ask you this. Where do your guys load out from? Is it from a Spirit Distribution Center or is it from a Lowe's, D.C.? From Lowe's. All right. 
Where is Spirit's office at? New Jersey and something else. All right. So when you communicate with these guys, they're in New Jersey. No, he is in Mississippi. So the reps for the account that you're running is in Mississippi. The guy, yes. The manager, the one you've seen, the name general, the general manager, he's in Mississippi. At right. the, he's I meet him at the low. You know why I never liked Spirit? Their website never worked. That's why I remember why I never liked Spirit. They're not here, but every time I would go look up, because I was thinking about profiling them like two years ago on my channel, but I never did. Did you ever notice that their website never worked? No, I've clicked on it before, but just to see if it was a legitimate website, I never like clicked through it. And 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 it never comes up. It always says fail. It's nothing there. You never realized that? No. Did you did you put Spirit Logistics? Man, I'm clicking. Listen, in the email, Matthew Phillips, the general manager. Mm -hmm. Where it says Matthew Phillips at Spirit.com www.spiritdelivery.com I'm just clicking on that it's a it's a link it's okay. nothing www.spiritdelivery.com it's nothing it's nothing there Fact, hold on. Oh, they do got a branch here now. In Merrill's Park, a 1.7. Yeah, so, I mean, you know, yeah, man. I mean, you can, I, the, you know, I mean, that's the advice I would give you. I mean, you can continue to, you know, run, but you know, you need to just really educate yourself on the business and you need to toughen up. Educating yourself, okay. I mean, you know, in this day and age, you're gonna have to find an influencer or creator to consume information, the right information that you need. Um, if I were you, I would do a business plan I would come up with a strong, solid business plan. I got my business plan. You can watch the lecture either in the members only or you can get it from my website. You need to come up with a strong what? business plan. You have it in the members only? Pardon me? I said you have it in the members only because I'm a member. It's in, the, it's in the members only. So, yeah. So, go to the members only. It's one of the members only videos. Just watch that lecture and it'll outline. It's specific for this industry help you outline that you got to do the research to fill in those different bullet points right for that for that business plan right so that's going to kind of force you to understand what you really getting into okay and um then from there determine what lane you want to run in And then just get your business in order. You, you get your house in order, man. Your house ain't in order. Your business house. Whether you cut ties with spirit or not, that's on you. I'm not going to consult you in that because I don't want to be the, you know, I don't want to influence your decision. Yeah. That's the best advice okay. I can give you. All right, thank you. I appreciate it. All right. All right. You have a good night. You too. Thank you. No problem.